Now we are ready to talk about data structures after talking about asymptotic notations and some algorithms for searching and sorting. Uh, we're going to start talking about data structures. And the first two data structures that I'm going to introduce are very basic. Uh, we are going to introduce arrays in this lecture. And then in the next video, I will talk about linked lists. Um, both of them are, as I said, very basic. Uh, and um, they're good for, first of all, for uh, you know, start a starting point. And also they're important because many of the other more advanced data structures that we will introduce later on, uh, they depend on these two as their underlying data structure. So we use arrays or linked lists to implement uh, some more uh, advanced and fancier uh, uh, data structures later on. Okay, so uh, let's start with arrays. Um, we use arrays several times in the previous videos when we were talking about sorting and searching and all of that. Uh, but there are aspects that we didn't talk about at all. And so, uh, first of all, uh, remember that in C++, uh, we have two different ways of creating an array. Uh, so one is we can do that on the stack, which is the more common way of defining an array. So you start with a type, you say, say, for example, int, the name of the array, and then in brackets, you specify the size. And then if you want to, you can initialize it uh, using the assignment and the brackets and so on. Uh, but that's not uh, the point here. Okay, so this is on the stack. And then alternatively, uh, sometimes we create the array on the heap, uh, and that is by using dynamic memory allocation. Uh, using the new operator, right? To have int star a is equal to a new array of type integer, and then you specify the size here. Okay. Um, now here a is a pointer, but uh, you should know that in C plus uh, you know pointers and uh, arrays, uh, there is a there's a close relation between them. Uh, so, um, and we will talk about that later on here uh, in this series as well. Now, the important feature of arrays that is going to matter when we talk about different operations is that in an array, the elements are stored in contiguous um, area of the memory. Unlike linked lists, for example. So, for example, you have this array, and all the elements are stored in contiguous locations in the, in the memory shell. Okay, so this is index 0, index 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And uh, usually, uh, specifically for the second case, but also for the first case as well, you can think of the name of the array as a pointer pointing to the beginning of the array, okay? Um, and because of that, you can go back and forth between subscript notation with brackets to access the elements of the array uh, or uh, using pointer notation. Now, um, one important property of uh, arrays uh, is that we have random access to its elements. Random access. Okay, what does random access mean here? It means that if you have an array of any size, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, um, and you want to access one of the elements, and by access meaning, you know, I, I mean reading or writing, changing the value or, you know, reading the value written at position 10 or 15 or 100 uh, in an array, if you want to do that, that operation, the time that it takes, is independent from the size of the array. So, uh, in other words, you can do that in constant time. So, uh, that's what it, what it means uh, for random access. Uh, that, that's what it means when you say that we have random access in an array. Okay, so reading an element in the array or writing, changing an element, uh, the value of an element uh, is uh, done in constant time. Okay, um, so, um, 
Let me write it down. Meaning, read, write can be done in constant time. Constant meaning independent from the sign of the array. Now, you may ask why this is possible because this is not true about all data structures. For example, in linked list, we will see that this is not the case. You cannot in constant time access the, the, you know, I don't know, the 50th element or 100th element or nth element in general in a, day, in a uh, linked list, but in an array you can. And the reason, there are technically two reasons together they uh, give us this random access. One is what we said here, uh, the fact that uh, the elements are stored in contiguous places in the memory. So, contiguous area memory. And the other fact that is uh, kind of uh, trivial, we don't even mention it. And that is if you create an array of type int, it means that all the elements are integers. If you create a type, uh, an array of type string, all the elements are a string. In other words, all elements have the same type. They're all ints or they're all characters or they're all um, the strings and so on. Okay, now, uh, why these two uh, facts uh, imply that we have random access is easy to see. So imagine that we have this array. And you want to access, let's say, 0, 1, 2, 3, the element at index 4. You want to know what that is, right? So you want to know what is A at index 4. So A is the name of the array. Um, and let's say A is an array of integers. So A is an array of int. OK. Now, we know that in C++, every integer has four bytes, occupies four bytes in the memory. So an A, remember I told you that the name of the array is the address of the beginning of the array, pointer to the beginning of the array, right? So if I know A, then it means that I know the address of the beginning of the array. And then for the second one, I have to only go four bytes forward because of contiguous, contiguous area of the memory. And then for the next element, I need to go four bytes forward again, and then four more bytes, four more bytes, and so on. So uh, you just need to know, and let's not do it the four, uh, index four, let's do the next one. Okay, let's go to index five and ask about this guy here. So uh, the address of this location, the fifth element, is going to be the address of the beginning of the array, which is uh, stored in A, plus one, two, three, four, five jumps of four bytes, right? So whatever A is, which is the address of the beginning, plus five times four gives you the address of A at five. Because one more time, A is the address of the beginning of the array. That's always the case. The name of the array contains the address of the beginning of the array, the first element. And then to go to the second element, you add four bytes because that's how much memory an integer uh, uses. And then four more bytes, four more bytes, and so on. So simple arithmetic immediately gives you the address of uh, the fifth element or the 50th element and so on. And then you can go there and uh, read uh, what's there or change the value in constant time. So you don't have to traverse, in contrast to link this, as we will see in the next video. In a link this, to go to the fifth element, you have to start from the first element, or first node, as we call it in link this. Then from the first node, you can find where the second node is. From the second node, you can find where the third node is. So you have to traverse it. And because of that, it's not constant time to go to the end of the element. But here, you can just do the math, constant time. Then you find the address, go to that location in the memory, and read or write. Okay, so in general, we can say that the address of the ith element in an array 
is the address of the array, which is stored in A, plus I, which is the index, right, times the size of the element. Now, for integers, it's four, but it, if the type is different, each type has its own uh, size. And you can you can find that out in C++ by using the size of uh, uh, built-in operator. Uh, so I times uh, size of the element. Okay, so it's, it's very simple math that can be done in constant time, independent from how small or large the array is. And then that gives you the address of the i element, and then you can directly go there and check it out or change it. So this is the reason for having uh, constant time access to any element of uh, an array. And again, constant here means uh, independent from how small or large the array is. Okay, so um, some interesting properties and they're going to be useful, knowing about these going to be useful later on. Now uh, to introduce more operations. So this is for either reading a value or changing a value. But there are other operations that we uh, are going to talk about over and over when we talk about different kind of data structures. So let me uh, introduce those. Uh, but before doing that, I need to make a distinction between what's called the size of an array and the capacity of the array. So, so far, we were not very precise about that, but uh, there is a little bit of difference in the in terminology here. So size of an array, when in data structures, when we talk about size of the array versus the capacity of the array, we mean two different things. Okay, so for the size of an array, what we mean is how many elements is a st are stored in the array currently. Okay, so the number of elements stored in the array currently. Okay, so that's the size. Now, it could be that you create an array that is capable of holding, say, 100 integers, but you only stored like 10 integers at the moment. So 10 is going to be the size, but 100 is going to be the capacity of the array. So the capacity is uh, the maximum number of elements, maximum number of elements that can can be stored that can be stored in the array can be stored in the array. Okay. So for example, if I create an array of type int a, and then I choose 10 here, okay? Oh. Okay. One, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. So, uh, and then I say, for example, a at zero <coughs> is equal to seven, a at one is equal to two, and then a at two is eight. So these three assignments, I assign seven here, two here, and eight here. Then in this case, we say that the size of this array is three because currently I stored three values there, but the capacity, the maximum number of elements that I can store here is 10, okay? This will be important later on when you use an array to implement other data structures as well. So size versus capacity. And uh, now that we know these two, we can talk about uh, other operations that we use uh, when we are working with arrays. So some basic operations. And then uh, we want to talk about 
their time complexity, the time complexity of each one of these operations. So overall, uh, we are going to talk about six different operations, uh, adding or removing or inserting and removing elements. And, and insertion or uh, remove can be done either at the beginning or at the end of the array or somewhere in the middle of the array. Okay, so let's just start with the simplest one. So add or insert uh, at the end of an array. Okay, so let me show this operation in an example. So let's say you have an array of capacity eight. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and let's say currently you have 10 here, 2 here, and 8 here, and maybe uh, 7 here. Okay, so the size is 4, and capacity is 8. Okay, now I want to insert, say, 23 at the end of the array. Okay, um, so how do we do that, first of all? And secondly, uh, how long does it take? Now, how do we do that is very easy. We look at the size. Size tell me how many elements I've stored in the array uh, already, which is four, which means that the new element will be the fifth element to be uh, inserted in the array. Uh, and that is index four, the fifth element, right? So I simply write 23. I simply write 23 here. And then, of course, I update the size uh, to remember that now I have five elements stored in there. So that's it. That's how you do it. Now, in terms of the time, you realize that because of random access, I can directly go here and write in there constant time as well, updating the value of size, constant time as well. Again, constant means it doesn't matter how small or large the array is. So overall, it will be constant time big O of one time for adding something to the end of it, if there is room for it. If there isn't, we have two options, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so that was the first operation. Uh, the second one, the opposite, remove from the end. Okay, so let's say again, we have an array with capacity eight. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we have some elements here like, let's repeat those 10, 2, 8, 7. And uh, size is 4. Capacity is 8. And I want to remove the last element. From my data structure, right? So I don't need the seven anymore. I want to throw it away. So well, what do we do? Technically, you don't need to do anything to the array uh, because even though I'm not writing anything here, if you've used C++ before, you know that there are some garbage values in the other locations as well. So how do we know that these are garbage, but this is an actual data? Is by looking at the size. So size tell me that only the fir first four elements are the data that I put in the array, the rest is just garbage, right? So uh, if I want to remove the last element, I don't need to rewrite anything here. I just decrease the size and that's it. That means that I'm not going to look at that seven. I'm going to treat that as if that's just some random number that is there. So in other words, if I want to write something to the end next time, I write it over seven. So there is no need to change anything here. You just change the size and that's the remove. And obviously again, that is constant time. Okay, so that's adding and removing uh, to and from the end uh, of an array. Constant time for both. Now, the next step is what if you want to do the same thing but uh, to the beginning of the array? So add or insert to the beginning. Okay. So again, let's go with our array of capacity eight. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And let's say we have ten, two, nine, and uh, eight. Okay, so size. Let's do another one. Eleven here as well. So size is. Five, I have one, two, three, four, five elements stored here, and capacity is eight. I have eight possible, I can sort possibly eight values here. Now, um, we want to insert, uh, say, I don't know, seven to the beginning of the array. Okay, so insert 11, uh, 7 here. Now, if you think about it, how are we going to do that? Um, the, the only way that you can do this is by shifting all the existing elements, all the existing data to the right. So 11 uh, will be um, written here, and 8 will be written here, and 9 will be written here, and 2 will be here, and 10 will be here, to make room at the beginning for this new value to be inserted. Okay? So what I need to do is I need to do a couple, a few assignments, right? 11 should be assigned here, 8 goes here, 9 goes here, 2 goes here, and 10 goes here. Finally, this place is available, and I write 7. And I have 7, 10, 2, 9, 8, 11. And I increase the size to 6. Okay, so that's it, right? Uh, it's not as simple as uh, doing this to the end because we have to shift all the existing elements uh, to the right to make room for the new element to be added uh, to the beginning of the array. Now, what can we say about the time complexity of this operation? Okay, so for, for moving each element to the right, I have to read it first and then assign it to the next position. So that's two steps, two operations. And then I have to do that for all the existing elements, size. Uh, and usually, remember, remember, we use n for size, right? So it takes like uh, two times n uh, steps to copy everything uh, to the to its right neighboring position. And then we have to do one more step for writing the new value to the beginning. So overall, in the approximation of two times n plus one, or something like that, depending on how you count. But what matters is, in the big O notation, it will be big O of n. Remember, we don't uh, consider constant coefficients, but 2 times n and n uh, are the same when you're using big O. And also, plus 1 is, is insignificant in comparison to n as n becomes larger and larger. So it's linear time, which is slow, right? Uh, especially compared to here, when you have constant time for inserting something to the end of the, uh, of the array. OK, so that's adding to the beginning. Now, uh, the next operation is removing from the beginning, or remove first, I can say. Remove the first element from an array. Remove first. OK, so. Again, I go with an array of capacity eight. And um, let's say we have 10, 2, 8, and 7. And we want to, uh, so size, first of all, size is 4. Capacity is 8. And now we want to remove the first element. Remove the first element, this 10 here. OK? Uh, the way to do that is I need to uh, shift 2, 8, and 7 one position to the left. Right? So 2. We'll go here, 8 will be copied here, and 7 will be copied here, and then we decrease the size to 3, right? And that means that this 7 here will be ignored. We are not going to look at this uh, element as the 
fourth place at index three. You are not looking at that as data because it says size is three, only we have three elements that are important to us in the data structure, right? Uh, and I think I put that on already. Okay, so that's it, uh, right? Uh, but again, you see that because of this moving things to the left, I have to do it for n minus one element. So again, it's linear time. N and n minus one and two times n. Uh, in the symptotic notation, they're all the same to us. So order n. So there you have it. We have four operations, adding and removing elements from uh, and uh, to and from. Uh, the beginning and also the end. Now, the last two operations we're going to talk about is doing the same in the middle, right? Uh, so let's start with insert. So insert in the middle. Okay. Ten to eight, seven, nine, eleven. So size is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Capacity is eight. Now I want to insert, let's say, twenty three. And let's say I want to insert it here between 10 and 2, okay? Now, if you think about it, how can we do that? To do that, I need to move everything after 10, namely 2, 8, 7, 9, and 11. I have to shift all of them to the right to make room here between 10 and 2 for the new value 23, right? So 11 should be copied here. Nine will be copied here. Seven will be copied here. Eight will be copied here. Two will be copied here. And then finally, we can write 23 here between uh, 10 and 2. Right? So we get 10, 23, 2, 8, 7, 9. Eight. And of course, we need to increase the size here. So again, you see that. Uh, in the worst case, I have to shift n minus one elements to the right, and that takes two steps for each one of them, two times n minus one, and then I have one more assignment. So overall, again, similar kind of argument uh, tells you that it's um, linear time, order n time, some constant time. Now, the final operation is removing some elements from the middle. So here we go. Again, our array of capacity 8 here. And let's say the numbers are 10, 2, 8, 7, 9, 13. Okay? And let's say I want, so first of all, size is 6. Capacity is 8. My pen is acting out today. Um, so capacity is 8, and size is 6. And let's say I want to remove an element, but not the first or the last, but I want to remove, say, 2, this guy. So what should I do? Simply, I should keep 10 and move everything after 2, shift everything after 2, one position to the left, right? So, copy 8 here, copy 7 here, copy 9 to the left, and copy 13 to the left. And decrease the size to 5. Now we have 10, 8, 7, 9, 13. And because the size is 5, the sixth element, the element at index 5, will not be treated as actual data. So it doesn't matter if it's 13 written there or any other thing. Uh, it's not going to be considered data. And by, what I mean by that is if I want to write to the end of the array, I will overwrite this value. Okay? So 
There you have it. Uh, now, again, a similar kind of argument can show you that this is also, uh, this also takes cons, I'm sorry, linear time, order n, because you have to move uh, in, and these are the worst case, right? If you want to insert something right here uh, or remove, let's say, 9, then you just need to copy 13 here and you're done. So uh, in the worst case, it's order n time for remove from the middle and insert in the middle. These are, uh, let me add that here to emphasize on it, worst case, right? Uh, same bit here. Worst case. Okay, now all of this can be put together in a table, which is the last thing I want, I want to talk about in this video. Just summarize everything. So we had two operations, add and remove. And we could do that either at the beginning at the end of the array or somewhere in the middle. And we saw that doing that to the end is the simplest, takes constant time for both operations, order one, but everything else is linear time. Order n, order n, order n, and order n. And the other operation that I talked about at the beginning was reading or changing an element at index 5, 10, and so on. And that is, because of random access, is also common. So that wraps it up for, uh, for arrays and the basic operations that we have there. In the next video, we will talk about another basic data structure, which is uh, a database.